Wendy, what exactly is the Ukrainian president attempting to achieve here, and will it be successful? Well, I think if we take Stoltenberg at his word today, it will ultimately be successful. And I think it's politically sort of savvy of Zelensky and Kuleba to keep the pressure up. They may have taken it a little too far today in the sense that that they are angry at this development, which was very good for them. They will be a member of NATO soon. But what we have to remember is Article 5 of NATO, mm -hmm. which says that if one NATO member is attacked or under attack, all NATO members are considered under attack and will respond. So if Ukraine joined NATO now, we would have to be at World War III, and that's not something anyone mm -hmm. wants. We're happy, all the NATO allies, I should say, are happy to continue to arm Ukraine, to help them fight off Russia. They're doing a really amazing job at it so far. And, um, but they can't join NATO without endangering all of Western Europe and the United States. Right. You put your finger on it. It's Article 5, right? right. President Biden spoke to this, actually. Let's listen. We take, NATO takes, always take, Article 5, literally. One inch of NATO territory means we're all, we're all on war together against whomever is violating that space. So, and uh, certainly uh, President Zelensky knows this. And he has that room full there of NATO leaders to thank for helping him fund and wage this war. Is that the right move to start essentially chastising NATO for not being more clear with the path forward? Well, I agree with Wendy. You can question the tone he struck, but both sides are kind of having to play a role play here. The NATO side are saying, look, we're coming as far as we can with you on this. We're outlining some steps and conditions where you can eventually become NATO members, and that's yeah. what they're putting on the table, so to speak. And, of course, by the way, providing all the hardware that they can. And, obviously, Zelensky on his side has to keep up the battle. Listen, don't forget about us. We need to be in this club. We need to be in this defensive arrangement, given what's going on. That said, though, optically, it's not a great optics, given Ukraine is in this counteroffensive against Russia right now. It's supposed to be a critical battle this summer in terms of where this war does go from here. So, yes, NATO can say we've come to the table. Zelensky has to play his role. But if you're from Russia's perspective, you're saying, look, Ukraine aren't yet in NATO and uh, not going to be in it anytime imminently either. Well, and of course, Russia already has had some choice words uh, for NATO and the fact that the alliance is now expanding to 32 members after Turkey dropped uh, its opposition to Sweden joining. And this is something that Anne-Marie also had a conversation about earlier in Lithuania with Finland's president who sat down with her. Listen to what he had to say. Now we have a green light, at least to some extent. And uh, I have strong belief that uh, we will see Sweden quite soon as a full member. After our uh, Finland and Sweden joining NATO, uh, the Baltic Sea will be peaceful. So, Enda, he says there are things will be peaceful, and yet this is another provocation of Russia. Is, is it not? Does this not potentially raise the specter of some kind of escalation on the part of the Kremlin? It does. There's tit for tat going on. Finland threatening an expulsion of, of dip diplomats, for example, as well in response. Clearly, this is just an indication of the space that we're in. Uh, it's, uh, tensions are as maybe not as high as they could be, but in a space that you couldn't have imagined even a decade ago in the Baltic, for example. But Sweden going in now, clearly Finland's path will be clearer, one would expect. And obviously, if they do get in, then, of course, that will be reacted to, uh, or that certainly will be greeted by Moscow very warmly. I want to ask you about uh, an important conversation, uh, both of you, that took place today in Washington. That's about this merger between Live Golf and the PGA. Kaylee, you were there mm -hmm. for this uh, hearing in the Senate that was essentially looking into national security concerns, the influence Saudi Arabia more than antitrust, although we learned a lot about that as well as Congress weighs in on the potential merger. Connecticut Senator uh, Richard Blumenthal spoke with Kaylee today uh, about his take on this. Listen. Golf has a central role in our society, sports have a central role in our culture and our national interests. So the American people deserve to know the facts surrounding this deal involving sports washing by the Saudi government. We can produce reports, recommendation, legislation, and the Department of Justice can use facts that we adduce here in their investigation of antitrust issues that could lead to blocking the deal. A lot of talk about sports washing mm -hmm. today. I just wonder if this hearing actually leads to anything? Well, as Senator Blumenthal said, it could lead to information that the Justice Department could use, and certainly that report about the antitrust mm -hmm. 
the documents that came out today about the antitrust possible violations uh, were really fascinating. They they agreed not to poach each other's players. They agreed to turn the PGA from a nonprofit to a profit, and that the money would go you know to executives and other people. Mm-hmm. Um, so in that sense, it is useful. And I think the Senate was also playing the role of ginning up public outrage about this because the Saudis have such an abysmal human rights record. And now they're controlling U.S. golf. It's, you know, I can, there's, there is an issue there. And it was certainly offensive to the 9-11 families who showed up at the hearing today. That's right. Yeah, and of course, while that, all of that is true, Wendy, and we did see, I think we actually have images of some of those 9-11 families in the hearing room. There were still members of this subcommittee who didn't think they should be holding this hearing today, including oh. the ranking member, <laughs> That's right. Senator Ron Johnson. They yes. basically just thought it was too early in the process, and there are other things that they could have been investigating, and yet the hearing was indeed held. Well, and there's that Republican orthodoxy that the PGA is a private company, and if it wants to go into a merger with a foreign country, it can do that. Yeah.